the impact of being harmed by someone who's supposed to love you. And the impact is very similar to what I went through myself. And I thought writing a fictionalized version would be, you know, cathartic or even healing. And maybe in a little, little ways it was. So this is the chapter just called Yesterday. Anna felt good about going home. Every day in the past week had been a blessing. Ted was loving and gentle. He was home every night treating her with a home-cooked dinner and romance afterward. It was almost too good to be true. But she reveled in his newfound love and romance for her. She walked into the house and instantly stopped at the rattling of the glass bottles banging against each other coming from the kitchen. She took off her jacket and hung it in the closet and looked at her car keys in her hand and then dropped them in her purse. Ted, she was almost afraid to ask. He staggered into the living room, kicking the lingering beer bottles that followed him. Why are you so late? I wasn't late, she said. Oh, Ted, what's wrong? F you, he muttered. I don't like to use swear words in my story, so um, at least this one. Um, um, I'll get dinner, she sighed, trying to pass him. What, whatever, he muttered. She let out a small sigh of relief as she entered the kitchen and walked over to the refrigerator. She pulled out the makings for a salad and set them on the counter. Her body froze with terror as she felt him behind her. She held her breath as she continued to make the salad. What the F are you doing? Making dinner, she answered without turning around. Effing liar. And before she could react or turn around, he grabbed her by the hair, pulling her off her feet, and dragged her through the kitchen to the living room. Anna held her cries as he tossed her across the room, landing on the sofa. Anna couldn't believe what she was seeing, but if she ever came face to face with the devil, it was now, in the form of her husband, Ted, the man who was supposed to love her, the man who was supposed to protect her. Now there was no one to protect her from the full rage. His blue eyes, now surrounded by the raging redness, glared through her. He wasn't even looking at her. He was looking through her. Using both fists, both clenched fists, he punched both sides of her face, pummeling harder and faster as if he were a boxer using a body bag. Anna instinctively tried to cover her face, but it angered him more. He forced her arms apart and he straddled her, bottle, her body, pummeling. Anna whimpered, please stop, but her ears were now deaf to her cries. Anna knew her face was no longer her own, and she had to do something. Protecting herself was tiring her, tiring her out, so she did her best to wiggle under his weight, and she managed to push his body when he shifted his weight. Ted flew backwards over the coffee table, and Anna ran across the large living room towards the bedroom, where she thought she could lock herself in until he calmed down. But Ted grabbed her ankle, and Anna fell on the floor. Ted held tightly onto her ankle as he stood up. He grabbed her head by her hair and slammed her head into the wall, knocking her unconscious. He flipped her body on her back and stared down at her. Wake up, bitch, he kicked her legs. Stop faking, he yelled, kicking her side. Frustrated that she just lay on the floor, he flipped her body over, stomping on her back. Come on, wake the F up, stop faking. He kicked her in the head just as she began to stir. Anna opened her eyes, but all she could see was red. The blood from her forehead streamed down her face, fogging her eyes. She felt the force of the blows to her head from his foot, but couldn't imagine the pain, even as the ringing stung in her ears. The stars almost floated above her, and she felt herself being pulled to the floor. Her eyes frantically looked around the room, but he seemed to have disappeared. He wasn't in the room, and she wasn't sure where he went. Maybe he was tired. Maybe he was, da he was done. Anna tried to stand, but her legs were too wobbly, so she crawled to where she noticed her purse, still on the chair by the door. The door, yes, she had to get out, somehow. It seemed to be miles away. All she had to do was make it to that door. Then what? She couldn't even think that far. She continued to crawl, and then there he was, right in front of her, blocking her path. I knew you were faking. He picked up her body by the shirt and felt her bra rip from her body. He must have grabbed her bra with the shirt. He tossed her like a rag doll on the sofa. The sofa gave him leverage that he needed. He eyed the purse, snatching it quickly. 
Anna watched in horror as he dumped the contents on the floor and stomped on them. There it was, cell phone, smashed, car keys, under the pile of rubble from her purse. He stood over her. You're a whore. I don't know who you think you are. He screamed in her face, his hands grabbing her face tightly, squeezing the life out of it. Who the hell are you? Anna couldn't answer. She knew nothing he, she would say would matter, not to him. She couldn't even beg anymore. She didn't know if there was anything beyond this moment, and then he stopped. He stopped yelling. He didn't say another word. He walked over to his recliner and calmly sat down. Anna's eyes watched him as he sat there without saying a word. Maybe it was over. Maybe this was it. It was done. Anna didn't dare move. She didn't say a word. Get over here. He patted his lap, but Anna didn't move. His tone was strange, not angry, but no longer calm. Get the F over here. Anna still didn't move. She didn't think she could if she wanted to. Her legs were weak and in pain. Her face was numb and her head was dizzy and all over the place. She knew in her mind this was it. It was over. Over for her. Ted quickly stood up, grabbed Anna by what was left of her long hair, and then pulled her towards the chair. She could see that he was tired, probably all that damn pummeling to her face. His hand didn't even look normal anymore. Nothing looked normal. He forced her to look in his eyes, and then his eyes examined the damage he had done. I don't know you. What's wrong with you? Please don't hurt me anymore, Anna whispered. Stared, Ted stared at her as she, if she were now a stranger. He touched her face and heart, harshly and then wrapped his hands around his throat, pressing in deep into the center, harder and harder. You're going to die tonight, bitch, and I'm going to kill you. His whisper was harsh and pure evil. She looked into the red eyes of a man she loved for 13 years, and it was no longer Ted. He was a stranger, an evil stranger. She closed her eyes, her face streaming with blood. He shifted his weight and held her over the side of the recliner, squeezing her neck tighter and tighter. Anna felt the life drain from her body, her mind swirling as the darkness was getting closer. The flashes of light streamed through her mind. Not like they say that your life flashes before through your mind, but in the moment of death, your death flashes through mine. He's killing me. He's actually killing me. What will he do to me when I'm dead? Where will my body go? Where will my soul go? Will I ever see my son again? Who will come to my funeral? Will I even have one? The thoughts filled her head, and she could almost hear the shovel digging her anonymous grave, never to be discovered. No effing way, she thought. And then it continues. In this journey, for not just peace of mind and safety of her body, but also a struggle for justice. The part that I read was what actually happened to me. And the story is based on my experiences, not just with what happened to me in those 45 minutes, and yes, it was 45 minutes, but what happened after and how I had to get justice for myself or I'd never have any kind of peace of mind. So the story again is called Fractured Tears, A Struggle for Justice. It's available on Amazon.com in Kindle and in paperback form. So whichever way you read it. And of course, I have more stories to tell. So thank you for listening and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.